the camera. Good. There. Okay, welcome to Having a Yak, Mark. Thank you, Paul. Mark Baxter is the uh, councillor, a councillor on the, the Clay Valley Council. Um, and I just want to make it pretty clear that as a councillor on the Clay Valley Council, he's also responsible for, the, for other areas of the Clay, just not present head. So we can't continually nail him to the wall as much as we'd like to, but he does represent present head, he knows a fair bit about it. And so that's why we wanted to talk to you today, Mark. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Can I, can, I, can I start by thanking everybody? I want to thank, if this is going to the people at Crescent Head, I want to thank the people that voted me in last September. Over half of the village voted me in, and that was very kind, and I appreciate the compliment, and I'm, uh, I'm happy to pursue uh, the cause of the Crescent Head people. Thank you, Mark. So we just want to get down to business here. Yes. Um, we've had a, a new lease of um, a new lease of land out the back here at Kulik. Bottom of Kulik Mountain. Yeah. yeah. 120 houses. Yeah. And that's that's a go. It's going to happen. 100. percent Okay. Um, is there a requirement in that that it's permanent residential, or can it be holiday residential, or can the council actually get that involved? Well. That's a good point. Yeah, we don't want it to be holiday residential. We want to compensate for all of these uh, holiday houses, 174 holiday houses we've got in the village. And so if the 120 houses around there can be for families, that's what we want. Uh, whether we can mandate that, I don't know. I'm not sure we can. Uh... Well, my, my guess is we don't live in a uh, lefty state yet. No. You can't... You can't uh, Damn shame. You can't... Um... Can't, uh, we can't force that. No, no. because after all, rates are rates, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And, and the um, uh, the rates there for will help the council to build better facilities. Hundred percent. Okay, but we're running at about seventy-six percent capacity here as a permanent residential place, right? Yeah. But we're no different from Southwest Rocks, Ulladulla, Bermagui. Across half. Right. So yeah. maybe we just have to do that, do you think? Well, by releasing land behind Crescent Head, I mean, there's, there's, there's more land up Billmore, Billmore Street there. By releasing land outside of the village, we're compensating for that, all these holiday houses, and we can. See, the school dropped from 10 classrooms to 7. The local businesses suffer in the off season. So by getting more permanent residents, it's, it's good for the village. Yeah. And it's good for the character of the village. Yeah, agreed. Um, I understand also there's a, a parcel of land that's been released out the back of Dolkin Guide. This is a continuation of the Dolkin Guide State Tower. Yeah. I understand you voted against that. No. No? I, I was arguing for an access road through that to link in with the uh, the commune land. But besides just access for the people living on the commune, I was arguing for an access road as for a fire access. Okay. But I mean, that, 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 that's still negotiable. I think they're open to uh, to allowing an access road through that development. But but so there is, that is really land. Absolutely. How many blocks? 17, I think, to the end of... It's it's a, it's a gateway determination. Yeah. Uh, the developer then has to go through more planning for applications. I think, yeah, I think we get... My understanding was approved. It was approved. The DA was approved. Gateway approved. submission to the planning department. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, there's a gateway submission being implemented. There still is a planning proposal to come. Okay. Similarly with the land at the bottom of Dolphin Dive, there is a gateway that was undertaken in 1997, yeah. which, will, which should be able to be extended at least, but there is still a planning proposal required. Right. There is likely to be 120 to 150 blocks, depending on the floor and the corner, the bush fire and the flooding planning. Yeah. There is a large area that is subject to flood, and there may be filled with fire up to a metre on some of the blocks. Okay. But the number the block is dependent on the planning proposal and the studies that are taken, and it will be a couple of years before they're actually finalised. Okay. But, okay, a couple of years before that's finalised. Yeah. So we've got the ones at the bottom of the colleague. No, yeah. a couple of, couple of years before the ones at the bottom of the hill. That's going to be in the planning proposal. Over there. Dog, 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 dog. 
Dalton Sorry, Dalton. David, it's Paul saying Kalut. Kalut. Right. Kalut, you still have to put in a planning proposal. Dalton Guy of State Extension is further progressed than Kalut. Yeah. And okay. there's also another one yeah. on the southern side. Yeah, I know, that's the Road, right, in yeah. Mariah, yeah. Off Mariah River Road. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So there's lots, lots that are about to happen, but yeah. it all depends on your interpretation of about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. We understand also there was a, a release of strata land and a commercial um, enterprise due to privacy reasons. I'm not willing to say who it is, but we had not far from where the, the club was actually going for um, you know, the compact accommodation. We, in fact, have another one that's been approved and is going to be built. Are you aware of that one? What, what one are you talking about? Well, it's two blocks. On the front block will be a business, a house on top of it, and the back block will be a strata, a strata setup where you're going to have like villas. Is this down the chaos? No, no, no. This is this is not in that direction. But it is. I, I was wondering where. No, I'm not. I'm not aware. Not of it. Of, okay. Well, well, that was approved some time ago on the delegated authority, so it didn't even actually come to council, so the councillors wouldn't have any visibility okay. on that, except for the list of approved delegations. Well, that's that's where I got my information yeah. from. I simply read the paper yeah. and went, "How come that goes through, and not other things?" I think it's because probably. Um, we were, we're not aware. Well, you should be aware of it, and I think you're, you're in the ground and aren't aware of it. I think it's great, by the way. Can okay. I just ask, is that for a land? No, no, no. No, no, that's private land. It's back this way. Okay, thank you. That's private land. It's a, it's a development that doesn't require a change to the Kempsey Local Environment Plan. When there's a change required to the Local Environment Plan, even though it's agreed to be a residential land release, it's in the strategy, there still has to be a gateway determination which council puts to the minister. He approves that. There then has to be a planning approval, or a planning proposal to support to formally amend the LEP to rezone the land. Once it is re then rezoned, the developer needs to put in a, a development application to develop the land. So we're looking at a few years before we'll see any blocks actually ready to be sold and be developed. Okay, look, I think what we'll do is rather than, um, uh, thank, thanks for the explanation, Bruce. Um, <laughs> thanks, Bruce. <laughs> we, we could be here for hours and this is costing me money. Um, so I think if you don't know the answer, just say I don't know the answer. And I yeah. think everybody go, well, that's honest. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, the population statistics in the... Yes. In here. What? The, it's just a... No, I don't know, an no, thing, I suppose, but why, why would the council use 2011 data, comparing 2001 to 2011 data on population statistics, right? Mm. Well, yeah, there's a forecast you can go to on the on the site that goes from 2016 to 2026. Mm. So somebody in council is either lazy, as in an employee, or um, there, there's some, as tends to happen with, with constituents, they think, oh, this is a sticker. I don't think it is. I think it's just lazy work. But it does put the population of Crescent Head in an over... It goes from being an over sort of 55 mm. to 60 to right up there over 65 to 80. Yeah. So really old, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, given that that's a fact, and it is a fact, because I've checked it out, trust me, I'm, the, I'm not a politician. Um, so, and given the baby boom retirement yes. uh, numbers, there'll be a lot more people moving up here. Wouldn't we better be better off? Uh, well, no, no, we wouldn't be better off. But I ask, what's the council's plan to entice young people to here in the valley? What plan is in place to say, if you don't know the answer, by the way, that's okay, I've got one. <laughs> well, well, you've probably noticed the funeral we're suffering over the uh, building the cinema in town. Uh, I don't want to go to that. Please. No. Well, I was just trying to answer your question. Yeah, no, I'm talking about housing and about getting young people to town. The cinema's not going to 
how's that going to get? Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who are 25, see down their trousers and want a new future. How's that going to get them out of Cronulla into Crescent Head? Oh, I'm going to move to Crescent Head because there's a cinema in Kemper. No, well, you've got the 120 house blocks being released over there, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to leave Cronulla and come up and live in paradise, there's a golden opportunity. Yeah, but what you about jobs? Well, that's what I was trying to answer. I mean, we're trying to stimulate the valley's economic growth. We're trying to put more facilities in town so that more people come and live here. There's 1,400 blocks of land being released across the valley. Rural or residential blocks, not the suburban sprawl like Hawke Quarry. So hopefully people will choose quality of life, come and live in this valley. But but there's a lot of people who choose to live in Port Macquarie because they've got the cinemas, the restaurants, the facilities. And the jobs. And the jobs. But if you attract more people to come and live here, you get that multiplier effect of more people living in the valley. We're going to Tamarai River Road. Port Macquarie gets 1.6 million visitors a year. If we get 10% of them come up that road, go and visit, go to the scuba diving at South West Rock, come to Crescent Head for lunch, catch a wave. If we get 10% of the visitors come up, that's bringing money in. Some people might want to come and live up here and work down there. Yeah. So connecting us to Port Macquarie with the Mariah River Road is a big one. Increasing the facilities in town is a big one. The other big one that we're working on is to get rid of this stigma about... There was a, there was a, a doctor's advertiser, a physio, head of physiotherapy advertised for the hospital. It took them months. I don't, think, I don't even think they've filled the position yet. And th I've heard through the grapevine one of the reasons they couldn't get somebody to fill a position was, oh, I don't want to live in Kempsey because of the crime. Now we're working on a, on a plan at the moment to get these street kids off the street. Stop, hang on, I don't want to go down this track. No. Because it's Kempsey, it's not Prison Head, and because you are right, I'm not, I'm not. Well, I don't know about that. Well, six weeks ago, all the, all the caravan park people suffered theft. So I have since I've been coming. We've here. suffered theft out here. Yeah. We get cars stolen out here. There's a crime problem. What I'm saying is you address the source of the problem. You don't just lock them up. Address why there's all these street kids wandering the streets. Mike, that's why I respect you, because you're passionate about that. Mm. So that point's given, okay. and I have no arguments with you about it. Done. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not arguing about anything, I'm just trying to... I'm with you. Yeah. Get through your list. Yeah. <laughs>